All right, when you see a garbage bag with content that looks like there are roots in there, you know what's coming up. And besides that, the title, the thumbnail, and all that fun stuff. It's time to do a going, going, gone video. I have watched orchids decline for the past four months, and well, seeing as I just changed my mind about discarding Evander Denisoniana, video which I will link below, I figured I'm going to follow up with a going, going, gone video and actually discard some orchids. I'm sure that for many that it won't come as a shock to you if you followed my channel, you know what's coming up. While timestamps are in the description, I'm going to take the time to talk about the orchids I'm throwing away today and what went wrong. Maybe that'll help somebody. But before we start, hello! Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, today is the day that uh, my self-esteem is very low again. And if you want to help raise that up a little bit, <clears throat> yeah, the like button or the dislike button would help immensely. I can tell you that much. Any kind of engagement, bring it on. I need it for a video like this. If you have not seen my attempt at rescuing my Vanda Denisoniana video, it's going to be linked in the description. This is pretty much a follow-on so that my videos don't get too long. Here we've got Brassocatlia Nanipuakea Dogashima, and well, her history is as follows. When she arrived, she was in a box with a Fasarium infected orchid. I had no idea that this was going on. I exposed her to all the light she needed, I stressed the orchid out. Second year, I recognized my mistake and I didn't stress the orchid out, but I put her into bright light and then she bloomed for me. It was fabulous. She smells like peppermint. She is gorgeous. She is white. She's everything that I like in a bloom. Third year, I repotted her because she appeared to be very vigorous and I saw the purple ring in the rhizome. Now, because she was so vigorous, I thought, fine, I'm going to take three pieces pot the best piece up in ceramis and semi-hydro and the other pieces well they already long gone because they went into like a hob filter material ICU setup and it just didn't work. This piece I thought was going to make it but over the course of the summer it just declined and now we've got like breadsticks in here. <laughs> So yeah, my Brassocatlia Nanipuakea Dogashima, which I probably will not replace, not because I don't like her, but I don't appreciate the nursery that she originally came from, is history and a beautiful memory also for the fragrance factor. I am getting ahead of myself. This is for my media and this is for my garbage. Take that out. Everything is going to be recycled. Got lots of work to do for recycling all my inorganic media, which is awesome. No complaints there at all. Okay, you ready for the next one? Well, the next one is one of the many Tolumnias I may be losing because of scale. So the first year that I had this orchid in my care, I thought I was going to grow it to Vanda size status and I over fertilized it with 300 parts per million and I singed and burned the roots. In the second year, I managed to recover this orchid because I really, really toned down on the fertilizer and supplement levels and was actually just watering plain RO water for the longest time. And then it came back. And this is unfortunately Gyrex Flyer Firm White. Pretty little orchid. Now, in this season, I was starting to get a scale breakout, which I thought I had gotten in time. I did a video on that, which I will also put up a card for, but... I was doing a lot, a lot of scale maintenance, but clearly this one has already gone way past its due by date. There is no rescuing it at all, which is a shame. And that is why I'm holding on to the other two that I still have, which may follow suit. I have no idea. I don't know, but there's still some lush green looking stuff on one side of them. And yeah, well, I'm hoping that maybe I can get them through, but my climate is going to be changing drastically. It's going to get even colder and, well, rescuing orchids when there's not enough light and the temperatures are too low is going to be a tough one. So I have two more in the sidelines, but I didn't want to do it all in one go because, you know, there's still hope. Sorry for that jiggle. Yeah. But you can see how much root growth she did manage to get when I started to treat her right. Boo on the scale is what I can tell you. Boo on scale. 
Okay, we got ourselves some more lava rock. Oh, that is awesome. And big lava rock. That is even better. Right. Who's next? Catlia Holdenii. Oh boy. Never really felt like this orchid was going to take off for me, but you know, she was growing slowly. And just bit by bit, then I made a division. And if we are lucky enough that Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents manages to get her to bloom out, she still lives on with that division over in Portugal. So I am hopeful that Fernanda is going to get it right. This orchid for me has always had an issue with scale, which I've been treating all the time. But eventually, I would say the conditions throughout the spring of 2022 were so horrendous, she never recovered from that, which is a shame. And as much as I can see that there is another new growth coming here, I don't know about you, even though treating with scale, eventually some orchids, I don't know, let me know in the comments, are you just over them? Like, okay. It's been four years. Are you over them? They've never really performed well and you're like, Ugh, I've got others to focus on, others that are doing well, etc. That is where I'm at with this orchid. I'm over her. And well, knowing that there is a division probably thriving over in Portugal, <laughs> I can see what's going on at that end. So I'm just going to remove, try to contain my mess but to remove her out of the pot. Oh, you know what? I am actually going to enjoy all this recycling work here because I do like cleaning my leka and my media. I know it doesn't look like a great chore. It looks like it's tedious, but for me, it's therapy. I actually very, very much enjoy it. I do not like throwing orchids away, but I can assure you that there comes a point in time in my life when it comes to some orchids, um, look, I'm sorry, but you gotta go. I'm done. But I'm not done with any binning of the orchids. I have one more left if I remember to bring them all out. So I'm gonna wash my hands of that one, literally, and I'll be right back. If I have to do a follow-up video on this video because more orchids are gonna perish, then I will do that. Right now, my last one that is going to go is my Catlia Moscom. She came from Italy and she was a seedling, juvenile, sort of an in-between stage orchid. And it's a shame that she's going, but uh, <laughs> not that I'm done with her. But you know, there's more green to her right now than any of the orchids I've just shown you. However, even though she grew well for me for the first few years that she was with me, and oh, I love how she grows the anthocyan and the happy sap, all these beautiful things you can observe on this orchid, and variegated leaves. I mean, who doesn't like variegated leaves? However, the spring was not kind to her. I almost got her to bloom, and I wanted her to bloom out, but the blooms were deformed, so I took them off to help save the orchid, which by that time had already shown a lot of desiccation in the pseudobulbs. So the low light levels, the cold temperatures during the spring of 2022, I almost had like six to eight weeks of no sun at all and constantly cold weather. Yeah, that was it. In hindsight, I should not even have let her try to bloom out. Hindsight is a wonderful word in the orchid hobby. One that I use very rarely because I'm more of the person that says que sera sera. It's an absolute shame because I did want her, but even though there is an I here, people don't hate me. I am not keeping her. I'm not trying to save her. Now is not the time. When I see a new growth doing this at the base prematurely, that tells me all I need to know. There's nothing left when the bracts go so hard and brown in this state so quickly because these bracts should only appear when the growth is already up to here. And I have another orchid, which is a shame. I don't want to lose that one. It's a Rapiculus lalia, and it's showing me exactly the same symptoms on that first new growth on the pseudobulb that I am growing in my care. She is a struggling little Rapiculus lelia and I was so happy to see that new growth. 
but the new growth at the base is showing exactly those brown bracts and I'm not entirely sure she's going to make it but I want to keep her, I want to keep trying because again the weather conditions for Rapiculus Lelia moving forward are going to be much much more conducive than what I'm throwing away now and I know full well I am not going to be able to bring these orchids back to life with what is coming up. So that is my going going gone video. It's not a pretty sight but let me tell you something within myself. You tell me as well in the comments what is worse watching an orchid decline knowing you can't help it and not throwing it away because you know just in case or is it better to just throw it away the moment you know you can't help it i don't know anywho i have a lot of cleanup to do but i can tell you this is therapeutic for me the cleanup not the binning of the orchids of course if this were spring, I would call it spring cleaning, but nope, this is creating space for orchids that really, really need it more in the coming months. If you stay to the end, let me tell you that I do appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Not exactly an informative video, but maybe there was something in there that you found of interest, even if it is just to see orchids being binned. <laughs> Don't know how interesting that is, but okay. Know that you are appreciated. Have yourselves a beautiful day. That one condition, though, will always stand that you stay safe. Please take care. Bye. I knew I'd forgotten one or two or three, but definitely this one. Oh, my worst shelf. The thrips got to this one. This is my little Rangus Luteo Alba variety Rhodosticta. And yeah, even though it did try with a brand new leaf. We did try. I didn't get to it on time though. I don't think there's anything left in the crown. Uh, yeah, so this one's a goner. But let's end up on a positive note or, or maybe not. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hold on to those horses. Is this a viable crown or is it just me? Is that just the stem? Oh, wow, I thought I was done with the video, but hello. What is this? Let's have a look. Could that possibly be a leaf? You guys, I don't know what to do now. Huh. I am not going to bin this. I didn't mean to waste your time. I had every intention of binning that. But let me show you something else because I do like to end on a positive note as best as possible. When it comes to videos like these, you know, they usually end up on the boo-hoo, poor me side. So let me show you the other Luteo Alba variety Rhodosticta. Also very, very harshly attacked by thrips. But just like the other one, it grew a new leaf and it's holding on. Apart from the crown damage that the thrips did, the rest of the leaf is starting to look pretty nice. So yeah, currently soaking in calcium and magnesium. Poor little plant, hey? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I didn't mean to waste your time but if i'm seeing that little touch of green there i'm gonna leave it the roots are still okay that is something i wasn't expecting so yeah we'll keep an eye on it and i will keep you posted <laughs> anyway thank you for sticking around take care bye